If you're after a laptop that can handle any creative tasks, play the latest games and basically do anything you need it to, but your budget tops off at about a thousand pounds, well don't worry your lovely little head about it. Because I've been testing a selection of the greatest, most powerful notebooks you can snuffle yourself for under a grand right now, rocking NVIDIA's powerful RTX graphics. Perfect for your students, your thrifty gamers, and anyone who requires a crotch thrustingly capable laptop without spaffing all of their savings. So here's my shortlist of the best grade value sub £1,000 laptops that pack a proper RTX punch. And a massive thanks to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. So let's start with the Acer Nitro 5, one of the most affordable laptops in this group at under 800 of your British pounds. Yeah, the 2.2 kilo chassis does flex somewhat under pressure, but I do really like the smart, if somewhat dark design. And that sinister red glow of the keyboard gives it an almost menacing appearance during all-night gaming sessions. You've got a reasonably generous selection of ports here on the Acer Nitro 5 shared between the two different edges. This includes an Ethernet port and several Type-A USBs. Well, you've also got yourself a single Type-C USB port, shame there's not more of them, and also an HDMI port for hooking up external displays. So not exactly the most flexible setup in this group of laptops, but it will certainly do the job. Now the Acer Nitro 5 laptop is powered by Intel's Core i5 11400H processor backed by 16 gigs of RAM. And all of the laptops in this roundup also feature one of Nvidia's GeForce RTX 30 series GPUs, which are ideal for content creation and a sly bit of gaming in your downtime. And here in the Nitro 5, it's Nvidia's GeForce RTX 3050 Ti powering those visuals. Like the rest of NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 30 series, this serves up some great gaming features like DLSS, which maintains a fluid frame rate while keeping those visuals thigh-strokingly gorgeous. No tearing or other graphical glitches to speak of. And you've also got Dynamic Boost 2.0, which can divert power to the CPU, the GPU, whatever needs it the most to avoid any pesky bottlenecking. So to test out the game and performance, I ran the absolute memory guzzler that is Spider-Man Remastered on the high detail settings with ray tracing also knocked up to high, and it was a smooth and satisfying experience. Indoor scenes averaged around 40 frames per second, maxing out at 100, while even the taxing open world swinging held steady at just over 30 frames per second. I did notice a wee bit of judder here and there, but it was perfectly playable. That old classic Doom Eternal was limited to the high graphics quality by the onboard VRAM, but it still ran like a peach. The average frame rate was 125 frames per second, and only a couple of times in a very intensive session did it dip as low as 30 FPS. And last up, I ran Forza 5's in-game benchmarking on the high graphics setting with TAA enabled, and this spaffed out an average score of 84 FPS. So certainly whatever type of game you're into, you'll be able to play the latest titles and you won't have to worry about bumping all the way down to the lowest graphic settings in order to get a silky smooth experience. The Nitro 5 does host some dedicated gaming tools as well, which can be fast accessed just by poking this little shortcut key here. It's not exactly feature packed, but it does allow you to quickly and easily change between the different power plan modes. You can also control those fans, boost them up to max when needed. And yeah, on that maximum level, you get some serious blast out of these things. It's pretty noisy, as you can tell. Not exactly ear piercing, though. Not as bad as some gaming laptops that I've tested. And they do their job. They do keep the Nitro 5 nice and cool. No complaints with that 15.6 inch IPS display either. You've got a full HD resolution, keeps the graphics nice and sharp and it tops off at 144 hertz refresh as well for a silky smooth experience as long as the frame rate can keep up you've got 512 gigs of internal storage so not a massive amount of space got to admit but you do get some pretty strong battery life out of this thing up to eight hours of mixed use although obviously if you are going to be doing gaming on the likes of spider-man you can expect that battery life to plummet quite considerably Next up is the Median Eraser Deputy P25, which can be grabbed for around 750 quid with the latest sales, taking it down from 999 pounds, a veritable bargain given the excellent specs. This chunky chassis may look like a proper hefty slab, but the Median Razor actually only weighs just over two kilos, and it is absolutely packed with ports. You've got yourself a trio of Type-A USB ports split between the left and the right edges. And then around back, the rest are squirreled away, including an HDMI port, a dedicated display port connection, you've got your usual Ethernet connection as well, and again, sadly, like the Acer, just a single Type-C USB. Now, performance this time comes courtesy of an AMD processor, namely the Ryzen 5 5600H, although it is also available in a Ryzen 7 flavour if you fancy it, and that's backed by 16 gigs of RAM again. 
Meanwhile, the GPU has been upgraded over the Acer laptop to a GeForce RTX 3060. And Spider-Man really impressed me at the exact same settings as the previous session. I got an average frame rate just under 70 frames per second this time around with plenty of high flying shenanigans and punchy kicky action. I also saw a marked improvement in Doom Eternal as well. This time I was able to bump it up to the nightmare graphics settings and the game ran with a silky smooth 143 frames per second on average. So lopping off Gribbly's limbs never looked better. Likewise Forza, again stuck on the same high settings as that Acer Nitro laptop, ran at 72 frames per second, absolutely smooth sailing. You don't get any proper dedicated gaming suites pre-installed here on the Median Razer, but you do have full control over the fans if that floats your boat, and on the maximum level they really do kick out quite a bit of noise. Certainly on a par with the Acer Nitro, that's for damn sure, but again, like the Nitro, they do their job, they prevent any kind of bottleneck and just keep all that pesky heat shifting well away from the laptop. But yeah, you'll definitely want to slap on some sort of gaming headset when you are getting stuck into the action, especially as the stereo speaker setup here on the Razer ain't exactly particularly pant moistening. For the display, you've once again got a 15.6 inch IPS panel with full HD resolution. And again, like the Acer, it tops off at 144 Hertz refresh. It's got sharp visuals, you've got reasonably poppy colors, nice strong contrast as well for an IPS, but it isn't the brightest panel around, so it's not well suited to outdoor use. For your storage, you've once again got a 512 gig SSD, and as for the battery life, not quite as good as that Acer Nitro. You'll get around six to seven hours of mixed use from this thing on a full charge. Otherwise, again, if you are gaming, expect to see that life plummet pretty damn quick. And definitely don't sleep on the Gigabyte G5 KD, which can be snaffled for around the £800 mark. This board's very similar design to the Median Eraser, right down to that stylized keyboard and the touchpad with the separate mouse buttons. However, this Gigabyte laptop also boasts an easily removable battery, which is something you really don't see very often these days. Just flick these two switches and out it pops, ready to be swapped with a fresh one. Like the median eraser, those ports are spread between the left and right edges and some squirreled around back as well, including, yes, just a single Type-C USB. Again, you've also got HDMI, Ethernet. And then around on the right edge, you've not only got mini display port, but you've also got a dedicated memory card reader. So overall, yeah, the Gigabyte doesn't boast the most thrilling design in this roundup, but it certainly is functional. Plenty of ports and solidly put together as well. Now the Gigabyte G5 KD is another Intel powered machine, it's a Core i5 11 400H processor again backed by 16 gigs of RAM. So it's kind of a mashup of the other two laptops we already covered, it's the same processor as the Acer laptop but the same GPU as the median laptop, you once again got that RTX 3060 in there. And when you want to get gaming you've got Gigabyte's control center 3.0 no less in order to get your laptop all set up so you can choose between the different power modes to get that on a bit of performance. You can also manually tweak the fan speeds and also play around with the LED keyboard settings. So no worries if you're not a fan of blue you can change this to any other hue that you fancy. And once again a highly enjoyable gaming experience here on the Gigabyte. So for instance Spider-Man Remastered spaffed out an average frame rate of 66 FPS over a really intensive gaming session. Just a mite under the score recorded by that median. And then I got Grizzly with a bit of Doom Eternal again, once again on those ultra graphic settings, and the Gigabyte handled it beautifully, 143 FPS on average. While Forza shunted up to those lovely lush high detail settings, spaffed out a highly respectable score of 72 frames per second. You got a 15.6 inch IPS panel yet again, starting to get some deja vu on the go here. It's a full HD resolution panel with 144Hz refresh, imagine that. You've again got strong contrast and respectable colour reproduction here on the Gigabyte as well, so good news if you want to do some more creative tasks like a bit of photo editing or video editing. And you've also got a decent enough pair of stereo speakers packed in here, although they are rather quiet compared with the others in this group, so I would recommend a headset for sure. And you do once again have a 512 gigabyte SSD, although the battery life is sadly the weakest in this laptop group. You only get around four to five hours of mixed use from a full charge. And again, it'll be significantly less if you do want to get some gaming on the go. And last up for this laptop roundup, I am definitely a fan of Lenovo's Legion 5, which is also on sale right now for around 900 quid, down yet again from 999. This gaming beast weighs 2.4 kilos, but also sports the slickest designer of any of the laptops here. I just love the attention to detail here, it's like every single bit of it has been carefully considered rather than slapped together. I even quite like the pokey out arse around back which is uh, it's rather charming. 
You've got an almost soft touch interior, it's very comfortable to use, that keyboard feels great. And speaking of which, you've actually got four separate LCD key zones here with complete customization, so you can color them however you fancy. And the selection of ports is fantastic as well. For a start, you've actually got two, count them, two types of USBs, one on the left edge here and one around back. That's also joined by the obligatory Ethernet port. You've got plenty of Type A ports as well, HDMI. You've got another Type A around on the right edge, absolutely bugger loads of those little fellas. And then also a privacy switch for your camera. So just a quick flick of this and it'll knock off the webcam so none of your apps can use it. Now for your performance, we're back to a bit of AMD action here. It's the Ryzen 7 5800H processor powering the show, backed by just 8 gigs around this time. And meanwhile, NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 3060 GPU is once again stuffed inside. If you demand full control over the action, you've got the Lenovo Vantage app, which you can call up before you start your gaming session. And this gives you full access to a huge range of tools, more than any other gaming suite in this roundup. And yeah, definitely don't forget to shove it into performance mode before you get started. And you'll also want to deactivate the old hybrid mode so the Legion only uses the dedicated NVIDIA GPU. And then once again, you'll enjoy a gaming experience that's as smooth as a melty bit of lard. Again, the Legion couldn't quite match the super high frame rate of the median eraser when playing Spider-Man Remastered, but it did spaff out an average 62 frames per second. Didn't notice any judders or stumbles in that frame rate. Everything just looked absolutely ruddy lush. And then Doom Eternal again impressed on those ultra detail settings, 145 frames per second on average. And the Legion absolutely smashed through the Forza benchmarking as well with an 81 frame per second average score. So yeah, great stuff. Those fans are always active. They do get pretty noisy as well. So once again, I would recommend using a headset. Especially because the Omon Codon tuned stereo speakers may sound posh and all, but don't get too excited because they sound bang average. As for that IPS display, well, no prizes for guessing that it's a 15.6 incher with full HD resolution, although the refresh rate this time tops off at 120 hertz. But don't worry if that ain't good enough for you. This laptop is also available in a 165 hertz flavor. And as with the other laptops we've covered in this roundup today, you've got a 512 gig SSD for storing your games and other bits and expect around five-ish hours of mixed use from a single charge. So slightly better than that gigabyte model, but not as good as the others. And that right there is my roundup of the best RTX powered gaming laptops you can grab yourself for under a grand right now. But there are plenty of other great GeForce options out there for under a thousand pounds, including Asus's Tough laptops. I did cover the Tough F15 last year. That has a GTX GPU rather than RTX, but it's still an absolute banger. Great value for money. So if I missed off your own personal favorite budget gaming laptop, definitely clue me in in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest, greatest tech. Massive thanks again to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video and have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.